Good morning, this is Bill from Adi Europa Naples and today I have, well, I'm going to do kind of a short history of BMW and the importance of the 3 Series, uh, a car, you know, represented by this one. Uh, at this stage in the game, this thing, this is an E46, a 2004 model, you know, it's basically a Model T, uh, but it is an important car to BMW as was the entire 3 Series line, so we'll get into that. Okay, very briefly, BMW sort of started life in, well, officially in 1916. Uh, you know, there were a few companies being bandied around a little bit, and uh, eventually they became the Bavarian Motor Works, although not in 1916. That name didn't come until 1917, but BMW does proclaim that its official start date was 1916. And what they did essentially was build aircraft motors. And they built them very, very well. In fact, uh, in World War I, uh, the motors were, you know, very, very successful. They were powerful. They were reliable. And uh, the German government bought a hell of a lot of them. And that really helped BMW expand quite a bit. Uh, you know, they got more plants. They got stuff going. They were doing very, very well. And then whammo, Germany loses the war. Uh, along comes the Versailles Treaty, the French are pissed off, the British are pissed off, or at least they're, you know, kowtowing to France, and uh, a bunch of restrictions come down on Germany, so BMW can no longer build aircraft motors, so they have to salvage a few bits and pieces together, they start making farm implements, they start making household items, and, uh, you know, kind of keep themselves going any way they can until they can start building uh, stuff again. And finally, after a few years, uh, they were allowed to build motorcycles. And they built one of the most iconic motorcycles of all time. Uh, built it for many, many years. They're still in high demand today. Uh, but, you know, that progressed. They started getting into cars. And by 1932, uh, they built their first true all BMW car, the 3 slash 20. So uh, very coolly or very neatly, uh, the first BMW, the first true BMW began with the 3. Uh, a year later, they made the first inline six engine for them, and uh, they never really looked back. Uh, they kept growing until World War II came along. Of course, their aircraft division was going strong. The Luftwaffe needed all kinds of engines, and BMW, using some very questionable labor practices, did provide those engines, and uh, it worked out very well. It didn't work out very well. It worked out very badly, ultimately. Uh, but, uh, you know, they were making jets. They uh, were building all kinds of cool stuff. And then they all got bombed back into the Stone Ages. So uh, post-war, again, tough time for BMW. They're always dealing with post-war stuff. Uh, they, um, again, went back to building pots and pans. I wonder, you know, is there an M spatula? Uh, how would that work? Uh, you know, is it faster than other spatulas, you know, used more aggressively by people? Uh, I suppose if we could find an M spatula today, it'd be pretty valuable. Anyway, so they kept chugging along. They built this Isetta thing. It actually was pretty successful, a weird little small vehicle. And then you could say they made a bit of a mistake in focusing in on luxury cars. Uh, you know, sort of big, comfortable sedans, sort of Mercedes-like. Uh, they started building those things. They did, you know, okay with them. And uh, it, it, that, that sort of petered off. So by 1959, they were in dire economic circumstances. And the guy leading BMW at that point uh, recommended merging with Daimler-Benz or uh, Daimler-Benz. Scary, scary stuff. Scary thought for any BMW guy. Uh, you know, you call that uh, uh, apocalypse or something. But uh, that was resisted by the dealers and the shareholders. And in 1960, uh, they came up with what they called the new class. And that's where this 3 Series is going to find its origins. Uh, the new class was smaller, lighter cars built for the public, built for popular consumption. And they worked. They started selling them. Everything went really well. Uh, you know, they built uh, eventually in the 70s, they got into this 2002 model, uh, which became a real cult classic uh, all over the world, even here in the United States. It was driven by kind of, you know, hippie university professors and uh, executives, that sort of thing. People People who were real diehard BMW fans. And then finally, in 1975, you know, 77 in America, but 75 in Europe, they built their first 3 Series sedan, and truly, uh, they have never looked back. Well, actually, it was a coupe, 
but uh, it was the first three series. It was wildly popular and, uh, you know, started growing. Then came the second generation, the E30. Uh, that uh, was a huge success in North America. If you remember all the yuppies, uh, they all bought those things. and. Uh, you know, they became uh, a real status symbol. It actually took BMW years to shake off the sort of negative yuppie image from that. That went on to the E36, the car growing a little bit more, becoming a little bit bigger, a little bit more uh, technical, but still very much a BMW, uh, all powered by, uh, you know, there were some four cylinders, but the straight six was truly the bread and butter engine. And then finally, we get to this car, the E46, came out in 1998, and uh, in many ways was sort of the ultimate development of the original 3 Series. After this, uh, the next generation, eh, it gets a bit more hyper-technical and really could have been badged as a 5 Series. Uh, it's not bad, don't get me wrong, uh, but this is sort of the last true car that appealed to the die-hard original BMW enthusiasts. You can see the styling is nice. Uh, you might be surprised to know that the chief of design when this car was made was a guy named Chris Bangle. Uh, he later went on to be railed out of BMW with torches and pitchforks for the designs that people did not like. So uh, pretty, pretty interesting stuff. Bangle had a lot to do with this car. Uh, the lines are very, very attractive. You can see it sort of pushing the axles out towards the edge, uh, you know, nice and stout, stubby, nice roof line, little deck lid spoiler, uh, very, very attractive, cool car. Uh, and people just ate them up. They loved them. I mean, this was one of the best selling cars in the world at this point. Uh, BMW, I want to say they're ranked 12th, and there have been about 14 million 3 Series cars made uh, by the time this one uh, is rolling along. So very interesting uh, and successful history from BMW. Okay, let's get into this car, just for the hell of it. So this is a 330. Uh, this was bumped up to, oh, we've got airplanes now. I think that's a Pilatus. Look at that thing. Probably got cameras hanging out the side. Oh man, these planes are creeping me out. Uh, anyway, the 330 was a response to, you know, adding a little more horsepower to the base lineup, not getting into the M cars, and uh, it bumped the horse from uh, the 190-ish in the 328 all the way up to 225 in this car. So they added a little bit more displacement, got a little bit more torquey, and uh, anyway, pretty neat piece. So look, inside the trunk, it's pretty standard stuff. Uh, you get your spare tire and they almost looked like a white wall for a minute kind of freaked me out you can see that's another place my detailer didn't bother to clean but uh, anyway everything nice and proper there nice sized very adequate to fit a bunch of stuff does have fold down rear seating so if i pull this guy there's another airplane good lord busy today uh, you can lower that um, seat back and end up with uh, a hell of a lot more cargo room so very very nice stuff there uh, you've also got sort of BMW's legacy toolkit. Um, all their cars have really had this for decades. Nice to see all the tools in there. You can tell there's no leak in the trunk because they're not coated with rust the way you see sometimes. And uh, all very nice and proper and accounted for. Get that a little spin and we'll move on. Okay, so BMW has made magical inline six uh, cylinder engines for a very, very long time. And this M54 was an important one. Uh, it brought some innovations. It brought in the uh, Vano system, sort of a variable valve timing. Uh, what that does is adjust the, uh, you know, the cam and intake and that sort of thing to give you optimum performance all across the rev band. Uh, gas mileage, not fantastic, but not bad. Uh, very, very peppy, very torquey, and just a lovely all around engine. This is made into a five speed automatic in this car. Uh, you know, the true purists are always going to want the uh, uh, the standard, but I mean, if you're fighting traffic in Naples, for the love of God, I mean, it's a big grid. The last thing you need to do is be shifting gears anywhere. If I lived on a country road in West Virginia, maybe. Anyway, fantastic engine, three liters of displacement, and uh, a welcome sight to see a BMW with uh, six cans under the hood pumping out 225 horse. Uh, you know, Performance-wise, you look at the difference between this and the 328, and it's there. It's a few tenths. It's 
it's uh, you know a difference but it doesn't seem that dramatic on paper but driving it is very very different you can immediately tell that you've got the extra juice under the hood and the 330 you know you're rolling hammer stuff is much quicker uh, you know merging into on ramps it's just a nice little added bit of juice You know, I should have mentioned in this, uh, God, I got people calling me, in this history of the BMW 3, uh, the uh, M division, which is you know, basically BMW's version of AMG, came out in 1972, and uh, they've been uh, building cars for kind of aggressive idiots ever since, and uh, they did make an M3 uh, in the 80s, it was the first 3 Series M, not the first M, that was the M1, that was a collaboration with Lamborghini in the 70s, then the first sort of street street car they built was a 5 Series, the 535 IM, and uh, then did come the M3, and they've been making them ever since. There was an E36 M3 after the E30, and uh, then an E46, uh, sorry, did I say, yeah, I got that right, E36, E46 M, uh, which uh, became much more complicated, but uh, still a pretty neat piece. Anyway, you see the big xenon headlamps up front, very nice, it's got fogs, it's got the sport package, so it's got uh, lower front bumper, some uh, rocker panel stuff down the side, uh, very, very attractive. Uh, God, everyone's pulling in this morning, making noise. I don't know why our guys in the back, it's like, the louder the exhaust they can have, the happier they are. They just pull off the mufflers. You know, they don't even buy a proper exhaust, they just pull off the exhaust, so, uh, I don't know. I find it completely obnoxious, and find some way to put a stop to it. Anyway, it's got these beautiful uh, M Sport wheels, five spoke, twin spoke alloys, lovely M badged, kind of cool M series rocker panels on the bottom. We got more airplanes now. Oh, God. Construction, airplanes, employees arriving with loud mufflers. That cabin in the woods, man, looking better all the time. Okay, you do get this lovely little deck lid spoiler. Uh, very, very nice. You get uh, twin pipes down there on the bottom, very sporty, a little diffuser at the back, uh, nice lowered bumper, you know, all very sporty looking and lovely. Here in the back seat, this is really what drew me to this particular car, other than he's circling overhead. For the love of God, go find someone else to bother, please. Put a big muffler on your plane, anyway. This is what drew me to this car, was this beautiful black leather inside. Obviously it has low miles and that's nice, it has sport and that's nice, but I fell in love with the leather just about instantly. Uh, you can see very nice, tight, proper fit on all the panels and seats and trim pieces. Uh, this build quality is part of what made BMW and the 3 Series so successful. Uh, nothing came apart, nothing fell off, it was reliable, it was nice, it all fit together well, and you could just feel the journey German engineering inside the car and of course that's what originally appealed all those uh, hippie uh, university professors with the original 2002 so anyway everything nice back there for a small sedan it does have pretty adequate leg room you'd be able to fit three Canadians in the back without issue and uh, everyone's gonna be pretty chipper another plane doing circles fantastic oh, God. All right, we got to move somewhere not next to the airport. Uh, up front, same story, beautiful wood inlays on the door panels. You got side airbags on this car, your mirror controls, little map pocket. Uh, you know, it's very Teutonic, very simple, and extremely well built. Uh, this does have Harman Kardon sounds. So you get that little tweeter in the triangle of the uh, A pillar. Beautiful M sport seats in this car. Rich black leather, dual power, lovely. They have extendable thigh supports, which are nice if you're a bigger guy. Nice side bolsters to kind of keep you in when you're doing heavy cornering. And uh, it's absolutely gorgeous, I have to say. I mean, it is simple, elegant, gorgeous perfection. And that is why, you know, so many companies wish they could build this 3 Series. They really, really do. Uh, you know, the Mercedes C-Class is, is a fine car. But uh, the three really wins hands down. And that pains me to say as a diehard Mercedes guy. Right, let me see if I can reach in and get the uh, keys out. I've mistakenly put them in the wrong pocket. All right, let's hop in, get away from the noise. Very nicely sealed cabin, thank God. All right, so we got two keys for this one. I like seeing that. Get it in and fire it up. 
everything's so hard to do remember, reverse left handed now. Get my seat belt on. <clears throat> and we'll see what we got. Okay, turn this air down, although it's lovely. We're supposed to have a nice cool weekend, thank God, but uh, right now it's pretty muggy and nasty. One of BMW's long-term design philosophies has been that everything is sort of catered towards the driver. And you can see that in the way the dash is angled towards the driver, the controls, the radio, the little stuff there, the center console. It all kind of focuses in on the driver's attention, part of what makes these drivers cars. Uh, they also have a lovely, simple instrument cluster and uh, orange backlighting, which they say is the easiest to read. So, uh, you know, again, all geared towards driving, simplicity, performance, and uh, truly just perfection. So you've got your fuel mileage, you've got your um, uh, 150 mile an hour speedo, uh, you got your tack, you got a little ridiculous analog miles per gallon thing, and uh, your water temp, and then of course a row of warning lights underneath. Uh, you can see it has 86,000 miles on this one, it's 79 degrees outside, even if it feels hotter. Uh, P is for park over there. Uh, that little dot matrix, uh, those displays, they can often go south. So in this car, either the guy got really lucky and it just stayed proper or he had it repaired, which is more likely. Uh, those things can be all screwed up. Uh, over here, you've got uh, headlights. This was another feature. This actually bothered the purists that this car, this series, got automatic headlights. Uh, your fog lights, your dimmer control. Uh, BC is uh, driver information. You can go through and get your range, your miles per gallon, your clock, your temp if I had it set. Uh, you got a nice multifunction steering wheel with radio control controls, cruise control, horn, obviously. Uh, the BMW Rondell, which is often mistakenly uh, accused of being a spinning propeller, which it really isn't. It's just the Bavarian flag in the middle of the uh, initials. And, uh, you know, it's again, simple, lovely, elegant. Very nice, grippy steering wheel, leather, nice to touch, small diameter. You could just fling this thing around a racetrack. Uh, over here, you've got um, BMW's business CD, if you're doing any mergers and acquisitions, if you're uh, corporate rating some struggling firm, you can do it with this radio. Oh, I'm kidding. I think business CD means you could connect it to a phone at some point or something, but uh, I, I've always found it a bit silly. Uh, you have automatic climate control down there. Nice. Uh, this area is usually all scuffed up on these cars. You know, many of these are kind of lesser examples and they get all scratched. You know, girls with their nails or God help us in this generation, guys with their nails. Uh, they just ruin this stuff. And here it's nice to see that it's in pretty good shape. Uh, you got a little place there to stick a compact nine millimeter, maybe a 380. You got a genuine bona fide ashtray if you want to be smoking. Uh, you got some heated seats. Uh, you got, uh, what is this? Is this the, that could be a city or uh, country horn where it, let's see if it is. So I'm going to put, put it off for a minute and honk. And I'm going to turn it on. No. Okay, so that's not a Mercedes. I have no idea what that little button does, so I'll have to figure that out. Uh, DSC, dynamic uh, stability control. Uh, that's a traction control that's going to try to keep you connected to the pavement. You got all your power window stuff. You got a beautiful wood uh, shifter mechanism here. You can manually bang your way through the gears like that by moving it over to the left or just leave it and drive and go. Uh, you got some cup holders, you got your hazards, you got your lock and unlock, you got a little cool little, you know, although it's silly, nobody really uses change for tolls anymore, but there it is if you need to. A little place for paper clips or narcotics. Uh, you got airbags over here. Uh, very nicely, we have a bunch of service records with this car. We have an original um, uh, brochure for it and uh, all the original books with the two keys. You also get a great little flashlight, which I suspect is gonna work. Let's see, it recharges as you're driving along. Look at that, it's still working. Very, very cool stuff. Uh, I'm gonna break my spine trying to get it back in, so I'll just put it here and get it back in later. But that's a nice little touch from BMW. Uh, here in the rear view mirror, it's self-dimming. They give you this big ridiculous bubble on the bottom. Uh, these self-dimming mirrors are an issue in these cars. They tend to separate. Uh, this is not dirt. This is just the separation of the LCD. Just at the bottom, it's still fine. You can still see everything, but kind of annoying. And as time goes on, it gets worse. But um, they're huge money to replace, so be thankful it's this good. Uh, SOS button, that's kind of uh, BMW's version of OnStar. 
Uh, I don't think they even support it anymore, so if you press it, you're screwed anyway. Nobody's going to answer. I don't know, maybe. Uh, and that stupid Kojak bubble. Uh, you got, you know, what do you need? Little silly stuff. I like the way they have set it up so the uh, light comes on when you slide over the thing. You've got uh, a nice big power sunroof. So I love it when the uh, detailer comes up and knocks on the window in the middle of a video. That's just absolutely fantastic. Anyway, so you've got that rearview mirror. Shame about that little bit of degradation, but the hell with it. That is what it is. Uh, you've got a nice big power sunroof up there. Lovely. Uh, works great. Glass and a divider. And uh, anyway, otherwise, everything ready to go for a spin. I also think you have curtain airbags there in the front. Uh, that's what those little covers are uh, over the uh, A-pillar covers. All right, away we go. And I mean, look, that was just like putting a little pressure on the throttle and you just feel that six ready to answer your beck and call. Oh man, I mean, nobody builds an inline six like BMW. They should not even screw around with eight cylinders. They really shouldn't. Leave the eights to Mercedes, stick with the sixes. Uh, and you know, unfortunately, this is the end of an era because uh, all the sixes now are going to these little turbocharged fours, which I find revolting. And uh, they're doing away with the most incredible engine design of all time, that inline six. Uh, the way it just winds out. Beautiful. Uh, tracks down the road with incredibly neutral steering. Believe it or not, the real purists didn't like the uh, steering in this car as much as the earlier versions because they made it uh, easier to uh, park. It's a little bit boosted at slow speeds. <laughs> I think the uh, true purists wouldn't even want power steering, so the hell with them anyway. But I mean, incredibly centered feel, uh, instant. I mean, you just move it a hair and you get instant response. Uh, you just feel so planted to the road in a BMW. And of course, that is what made these 3 Series so uh, successful, so fantastic. You know, they're an entry-level car, so the price tag wasn't outrageous. Uh, the driving experience is amazing. You know, your short little four-mile commute to work becomes... A true driving joy, you know, the way you can just zip the car around in and out of traffic, the way BMW drivers do, of course, and uh, the responsiveness of the engine, uh, the feel from the brakes, the feel from everything, uh, it's all geared towards driving joy, and that is the true success of the 3 Series. Hopefully they just never lose that. There's some debate, but hopefully they never do. So anyway, this one in particular, 04 BMW 330i sedan, M Sport package. Uh, of course, has the uh, three liter, the M54, 225 horse, uh, 84,000, that was 86,000 miles. Yeah, only another 200 left in this one. Uh, all books and keys, great color combo, white over black. Uh, it's just a gorgeous car from a company that's made fantastic uh, performance cars for many, many years. If you have an interest, give us a call, 239-298-8000, on the web at aenaples.com. Thank you so much for having a look. We appreciate it. We'll see you with the next one. Take care.